I'm a small person, so naturally one of my biggest fears in life is to look like a turtle when I wear my camera bag. I don't know what it is about what's in my camera bag videos, but I just really enjoy watching them. I think it has mostly something to do with the fact that you kind of get an idea about the thinking processes and the preparation that goes into photography before even taking a single shot. And that's why I decided to show you my setup and show you what I bring when I take photos. I have to admit that I have watched a lot of what's in my camera bag videos and I have to say that I envy the people who can lug around a 60 liter f-stop bag with their three cameras and five lenses but unfortunately I am not one of those people who can do that because of my size and because of the lack of biceps power I always try to pack as lightweight and as minimal as possible. For that reason I do not always carry around my big photography backpack but instead I try integrating photography and possibilities to take photos more into my everyday life. And for that you will not only see one setup, but you will in fact see three setups for different occasions when I take photos. The first two are more of an everyday life kind of carry around, while the third setup is probably the one you're waiting for, because this is the setup that I bring to a dedicated photography day, to a weekend trip, to a day trip, or when I go out to shoot for the whole day. So let's start with the lightest one, but also the one that I probably carry around the most. Because in everyday life, I am more of a tote bag kind of girl. Every time I leave the house, I will always bring a tote bag. In here, I usually have my keys, I have my wallet, sometimes a book, and I also try to make sure to always have a camera with me. Most of the time, my camera of choice is this one here, the Yashica T4, because it's small, compact, lightweight, but still produces incredibly sharp images. So I always make sure to have it in this pouch and throw it in whatever bag I'm bringing. Of course, this is very reduced and very minimal. Just one camera, a point and shoot and nothing else. But for me, this is the best balance and the best compromise to just be prepared 100% of the times when I want to take a photo, even if it's just those small little situations like going to the grocery store, meeting friends, going out for a walk. I just want to make sure that I have a camera with film loaded on me 100% of the time. But of course, sometimes I do have to carry around some more things or more heavy things where a tote bag is not the best option. So let me show you setup two. The second setup is what I mostly use when I have to carry things like my laptop or books. So this was my everyday carry when I went to university and this is my everyday carry when I leave for work. And that's just a very ordinary backpack. This one in specific is from a German brand based in Cologne called Ping Pong. I really love their bags because they are 100% sustainable. This bag, for example, was made 100% of plastic bottles, which I think is just very cool. This is water resistant and in general very resilient. This has been with me, I think, for at least three or even four years. And I carried this pretty much every day. And still, it's in very good shape. But what I love about this backpack even more is that it has a very cool feature because as an accessory you can buy a camera inlay for this backpack so this is the camera inlay it's very simple it just has one big compartment which you can divide into two and in here I usually also only carry one camera usually it is my Leica M6 but there are also days where I feel like shooting an SLR so I'll bring for example my Nikon F3 with me or my Polaroid but usually I just also try to keep this simple and lightweight just throw a camera in here a couple of rolls of film and that's it so this feels very efficient for me because it's lightweight I can just safely and securely bring a camera around and still have enough space to bring around a laptop or some books and that way I can simply use my lunch break for example or I can go to the city after work and it's just super compact super lightweight and I do not really need more on an everyday basis and now we're getting to the fun stuff because now in my third setup I'm going to show you what I bring in my dedicated photography backpack so this is my backpack that I usually bring on a day trip or on a weekend trip or on a day of shooting where my main goal is just to take photos. This backpack here is the FunGuard Vioflex 47M and I'm just quickly going to show you the configuration of this bag. So this backpack has a rather flat compartment down in the bottom, a little bigger compartment here, a side compartment for a water bottle or for a tripod as well as a rather 
big compartment on the top but the main compartment for the camera gear is only accessible through the side or through the back of the backpack. Usually the backpack looks more like this and uses these two straps but I thought this way it looks a bit like a mom's shopper's bag and also it was annoying to always open up two straps so this is why I threw an additional strap on here just to make it look a little bit more like a roll top and more sleek and also only have one strap to open. Another bonus compartment this backpack has is right down here because it has an integrated rain cover. I think this is really clever that they attached it to the bag because I have had rain covers for other backpacks in the past but I usually lost them and because of that strap it's almost foolproof to not lose it and this is very very handy when it rains and you want to make sure that your equipment stays dry. Okay, let me show you what I have in here. On the side, I do have a water bottle because you always have to stay hydrated, of course. So this one is a metal water bottle from Eco Tanker, And sometimes I do not have it in here, but I put it in the compartment on top because I'm carrying around my tripod. I do not have it here because my camera is sitting on it right now. So if you're interested, I will put the name of the tripod somewhere in this video. I know that it's a roller tripod, but I do not really know the exact model now. It's super lightweight and super compact though. In this very flat compartment, I do have business cards. It's not like I give out business cards all the time, to be honest, but it's just nice to kind of have something you can hand to people if you engage in a conversation and they get interested about what you do. Or if you take a picture of a person, for example, and the person asks if you could send them the picture, this is also a great way to connect. Okay, next up in this compartment here, I do store all of my film. These two orange things are the Japan Camera Hunter film cases and I think they look super cool and are super handy to carry around your film. So I have one for medium format and one for 35 millimeter. As you can already see here, this top compartment is expandable and you can put a lot in here if you want to. I usually only carry around some food Food is very important when you go out to shoot. And I will bring, for example, a book or a jacket or a sweater. Of course, also my wallet and my keys and stuff like that. But what's good about this backpack as well, that there's a separator between this top compartment and the compartment with your camera gear. So everything you toss in there will not come into contact with your equipment. And now we're gonna open up the bag. So the first thing I'm going to show you that I also usually carry around of all of the other bags that I mentioned is a notebook and a pen. I try to always have something with me where I can write down ideas, be it video ideas for YouTube, but also ideas for photography. So these things are from Muji. I love Muji, but you can of course take whatever you want. Okay, what am I going to show you first? The interesting stuff or the not so interesting stuff? Okay, let's make it exciting. In here I have this pouch with a cleaning kit because I also always want to make sure that my lenses are clean and my equipment is free from dust. So there's this like cleaning spray in here, a dust blower, a lens pen, some size wipes, some q-tips and I also store my cable release in here for long exposures for example. And just to make sure to not lose them, I have these like adapters so that you can use 35mm film and a medium format camera. And I just keep them in here in case I feel like wanting to experiment a bit. On the bottom here I have some space for a smaller camera, so I usually bring around my M6. If you follow me on Instagram, this might not be a surprise for you, but if you don't, this is actually a little spoiler. Because I got a new camera not too long ago, and I'm just gonna reveal it today. So, drum roll. This is the Bronica ETRSI. I'm not gonna talk too much about this because there will definitely be some content on this channel about this camera soon. But just a quick little overview. I have the 75 millimeter on here and I have the waist level viewfinder as well as the normal 120 bag. And I usually also carry around a second 120 bag and the dark slide for the first bag, just so that I can change roles from black and white to color in the middle of shooting. 
In here I do also have the prism viewfinder. This is the non-metered version and this one is a bit beat up but works perfectly fine. And to expose my film correctly because I do not have the metered prism viewfinder I usually also carry around my light meter. This one is the Calumet DFM3 and I think it's the exact same model as one of the Gossen models. So this one can do ambient and reflective metering but it can also meter the light for motion picture films so you type in your FPS in there and it will show you the correct values for your camera which is a big plus and I think that's basically it. No it's not. Of course I forgot something. Remember the camera inlay from my ping pong bag? This one also fits perfectly into the top compartment of my fun guard bag. So in case there's some more gear I need to bring as for example my video equipment I can also comfortably do this and put everything into my fun guard bag. And I also have to add that this setup as it is right here is probably the most heavy setup that I bring. In here usually I try to also leave stuff at home so when I know that I only need one bag for the Bronica or that I know that I will not need the prism viewfinder I will just leave them at home. And of course I do not always carry around a full medium format setup so sometimes the Bronica stays at home and I will just bring around my Polaroid or another SLR for example. That's basically it. These were my three setups of what I bring when I take photos. I hope that you got my idea that I'm always kind of trying to find a balance to bring enough but not too much at the same time and just find a way in the middle how I could integrate photography into my everyday life when I do not have the time to spend a whole day on just shooting. And now that I'm done with this video I will probably just pack everything up, go to my computer and watch what's in my camera back videos for the rest of the day. See ya! Thank you.